How's it going, guys? It is 3.32 a.m. Sunday, 18th of June here in Japan. We have a past level diagnosis for step one, step two, but difficult question overall in terms of the pharmacology. Before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give me a like. Really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram, moment underscore medical, M-E-H-O, man underscore medical, links down below. Find me Telegram, links to Telegram group and channel down below. And I start the clip. 56-year-old man, 12-month history, unexplained dry cough, no past medical history, x-ray of the chest. Shows a reticular nodular pattern. Auscultation shows diffuse bilateral dry crackles. High resolution CT of the chest is performed, which the following is most appropriate pharmacologic therapy for this patient. So as I just prefaced with, it's a past level diagnosis. You need to know that reticulonodular pattern on chest x-ray or just simply a, re a reticular pattern, extremely buzzy for idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, aka usual interstitial pneumonitis, UIP, which shows up twice on step one NBMEs, the UIP phrase. Okay, so you need to know that that also means idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. And this is the same thing as honeycombing, colloquially. Step two wants you to know that high resolution CT of the chest is simply performed after the chest x-ray to confirm the diagnosis uh, prior to any biopsy that might be performed, okay? So, and this x-ray is just showing us uh, the honeycombing, all right? So I don't wanna get crazy tangential right now. I wanna stay consolidated. But I will make a quick point that don't confuse reticulonodular uh, for the honeycombing with idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis with reticulogranular, which means NRDS in uh, premature neonates. So let's just whip through the answer choice here. How are we going to treat it? So choice A, Dornase alpha, wrong fucking answer. This is a nucleotidase theoretically used in cystic fibrosis. I've never seen Yosemite give a fuck. It's more just a, a novelty type drug, okay, obscurity that if you are reading about CF, you might cover it in resources. Wrong fucking answer. So it's B, apoprosinol, prosinol, E1 analog, wrong fucking answer. So this can be used for pulmonary hypertension. Likewise, I've never seen Yosemite give a fuck. Students tend to fixate on the exact type of prostaglandin, prostacyclin, like OMG, Michael, is it PGE1, E2, I1, etc. You assimilate doesn't give a fuck, okay? It would be a scenario where uh, they give you a patient who has increased pulmonary uh, arterial pressure and they could uh, ask you something about which agent could help mitigate the presentation. You say, well, prostaglandin is the answer, okay? Because that's simply going to uh, dilate, but they're not going to fixate on which one. Wrong fucking answer. Choice B, guau finessing, wrong fucking answer. So this is an anti-mucolytic, okay? It can soften mucus. This is a high-yield drug for just general life, truthfully. You'll see this in a lot of over-the-counter uh, cough agents, cough slash uh, coryza cold medications, but it's truthfully not assessed on USMLE. I'm trying to think of any time I've ever seen it on step one or step two. And for a correct answer, I haven't. Okay, maybe rarely as a distractor, but I haven't seen this actually assessed. Wrong fucking answer. Choice D, nifedipine, wrong fucking answer. So nifedipine, obviously dihydropyridine, calcium channel blocker, can dilate peripheral arterials for hypertension, but... You can also be aware it's a first. It's one of the first line agents for pulmonary hypertension. So we said apoprosinol before can be used for pulmonary hypertension. Nifedipine can be used for pulmonary hypertension. So obviously bosentin is another high yield drug that's an endothelin one receptor antagonist used for pulmonary hypertension. USMLE is obsessed with that. And if I were to rewrite this clip, which I'm not, I could have thrown in uh, bosentin as another high yield answer choice because you got to know that one. So. Elephant in the room, holy shit, let's go to the obscure drug called perfenidone. Not my fucking opinion, okay? That's the thing. I'm not trying to be uh, creative or dramatic here. I mean, this is an agent that apparently inhibits TGF-beta-mediated collagen synthesis, and it can also decrease production of TGF-beta, and it's a first-line agent for idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. This is an antifibrotic agent. Okay, so as I just said, although it might sound obscure, it might sound low yield, this shows up on the 2CK exam in particular. If you're studying for step one, obviously you should be aware of some high yield farm and you're obviously going to have to ace 2CK eventually. So perfenidone, obscure fucking agent used for idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. You know the deal, make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe my channel and I appreciate your time. That's it.